action to cultivate, nurture, and grow them. Uh, they're here now to uh, share their insights, experiences, and ideas with us. And um, in order for us to start with that, uh, earlier this month, we have put up forms uh, to collect questions that you guys might want to ask the panel. And we have gathered this data. And it's, oops, where's this? I wonder why it moved. So, uh, we have gathered this data and we'll ask the panel to uh, answer them. So, yeah, maybe we could start out by just doing a quick introduction uh, of each of the panelists, just a quick one, basically. So, uh, let's start with Chaos. Hi, my name is Maybe I just think about Hang on. Hello. Yeah, you probably see the camera now as well. Hello, uh, my name is KS, so I'm L2 from Singapore. Uh, you'll probably see me around uh, for, for events. Uh, yeah, uh, for the new judges who have, I, I haven't met, uh, hope to see you soon. Yep, and yep, uh, next week. Uh, maybe you can uh, Richard, uh, just go with the order in the list. <laughs> hey, <laughs> I am Richard. Uh... Now I'm from the Philippines, and I've been playing Magic since uh, fourth edition. I think the first time Magic came here in the Philippines. I've uh, been an owner of an LGS since around 2009. So, yeah, been there. <laughs> but right now, since the pandemic, I closed down my physical store, and I've been uh, focusing on online sales. So, uh, just a quick plug: I'm, uh, my website is cxmtg.com, and I am now in my office. Actually, if you could see the, all the cards behind me. Uh, this is just top part of my office right now. <laughs> and I hope to uh, impart my knowledge to you guys. And that's it. Thanks, Chart. Uh, uh, QJ, please. Uh, hey, hello again. I'm QJ. I'm from Malaysia. I'm level three. Uh, like I said earlier, I have been uh, playing for 20, judging for about 10. In the middle, I also started a shop, so I'm also a store owner. And I believe uh, it's about maybe about 15 years. I started organizing before I have a store. Uh, if any of us dinosaurs are still around, you still might remember the uh, ECI TO exam that we used to have to take in order to start running uh, sanctioned events. <laughs> oh, yes, GACC. Yeah. I started running events in, in, in my university first. That's, that's where I got it. And I have my own store, so yeah. Uh, I can answer a lot of questions that you might have uh, regarding judging or TO. Thanks, GJ. Uh, next, let's go with Shanine. Hello, everyone. I'm Shanine from Thailand. I am also the store owner of Hobby Bubong or another store in Bangkok. Uh, so I've been judge. Uh, let's say let's talk about the store first. Uh, I opened the store for a little more than eight years already, and uh, we are one of the two premium stores in Thailand. And so uh, it, I feel I feel like it's also a part of my personal responsibility to like as a sample to other stores and also community members that uh, we what and how we should act as like a. Magic players that we should be inclusive and also be like not only uh, a hobby store but also giving to other community members if possible. So I have organized many activities in the past. For example, like a CSR that we try to create a charity event so that we can give to the COVID fighting teams, etc. Or even uh, when the nationals was canceled in two thousand and nineteen morale were falling very heavily so I organized like our own mocked up nationals something like that to like make the community still feel like they can enjoy the game so uh, I, I basically I love to organize events so if there's anything about these kind of things uh, feel free to ask me about this topic or any other topic yeah thank you thanks Shane. and last but definitely not least I wonder Hello. Hello. Is it my camera? Oh, yeah. Hello. Uh, I'm 
Uh, the approach to, when I'm Wendra, I approach from Jakarta, Indonesia. But now, currently, I live in uh, Bangkok, Thailand. Uh, I used to be a store manager in Jakarta, Indonesia. And I hope I can help you to answer the, the question from this panelist. Uh, I think I I want to miss you. I, I want to meet you uh, in 2023. Yes, you. Bye bye. Uh, thanks, Wendra. So uh, yeah, let's let's start it. Start out with uh, the questions. Um, so I'll just be uh, calling each, each individual uh, to answer the question. It's more like a <laughs> I come to think of it like a, the question and answer part of any. Depends on personality, <laughs> but yeah. Uh, so the first question here uh, is, yeah, this is from the community. Uh, how do we create an open, welcome, and safe environment for players, and how do we sustain it? Uh, since we started off with chaos, so let's start with Richard. Oh, okay. So, uh, well, the thing here is, whenever a new player comes in the store, first impressions last. Yeah. So. Uh, we as judges, we help we help uh, our TO, uh, however way we can. And uh, normally, uh, one time a, a judge, uh, he judged in my store and uh, commented on how dirty the store was. It, it was a cafe before, so there was food everywhere. So uh, he made it. He pointed it out that um, it's uh, not a good first impression if it's messy in the in the store. So we have to make sure that the the tables are all clean. Uh, and uh, there should be a dress code at least like people can just come in in slippers and short shorts and uh i'm not, not sure how it's called in, in other countries but it's sandal or sleeveless uh what we are inside our house and uh if not, as much as possible we we uh lessen the swear words like when people are having fun they, they can't help it but uh to, to say bad words so what I, I think what we did earlier before was that we put in a swear jar for everyone to to remind everyone not to uh to, to lessen the, the swear words uh, yeah Vince, you got a swear jar <laughs> yeah that's it that's uh, that's my input all right uh maybe you can go with qj next uh, just additions uh... Uh, for me, this is a, a very open-ended question, so my answer is kind of a bit open-ended as well, because um, a lot of this has to do with uh, uh, very, what's the word, uh, the logistics of things, like very, there are certain things that, for example, the premise owner can uh, insist on, um, like having rules and things that the philosophy of having an open and welcoming and safe environment is should be obvious. Like, why do we need to have this things? This should be obvious, and um, it's entirely up to the premise owner on how they want to to build this environment for their uh, business. So that's why I don't think there's any really uh, specific things we can do. Um, but the way that I would, uh, the, the philosophy that I would, I would suggest a premise owner to, to, to work towards a premise owner or the staff is that, um, you want it to be something that, uh, someone will really want to come to the event and that they will always want to return to the event. Uh, so, um, in regards to the second part of the question, how do we sustain it? It really is just maintaining the, 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 the goals that you set up that you you make people to keep coming wanting to come back thanks uh, that's all. oh yeah, yeah that's all all right but uh if anything like uh let's just say that if you like want to add something to whoever uh answered uh please feel free to do so um yeah uh, just in case uh, for the next one let's go with Shanine. thanks okay sure uh my actually my answer for this question is a little broader than uh 
the previous two because I, I try to be a little more generalized as possible. Uh, basically, there are three things that directly came to my mind when I think of in a safe and welcome environment. Basically, my first rule, number one, that I always stay very strict on with my staff and also my frequent players, uh, local customers, are that we have to be inclusive to everyone because, you know, people always try to be mean, even the, I'm sorry, I, not the word try to be mean, but be mean sometimes intentionally, sometimes unintentionally. So for example, like, oh, you live to the girl, right? No, you don't, you shouldn't speak those kind of words uh, because now you're trying to set some kind of barrier and making those people don't want to be a part of your community. So be inclusive and be vigilant to those, uh, uh, be vigilant against those who are not. Uh, my second point is try to be casual because if you are, if you're going to promote only competitive community, then it would be a lot more difficult. I'm not saying it's uh, impossible, but it's going to be a lot harder for people to start learning and enjoying your game. And lastly, uh, it's more of like your physical store device or hardware. Like for example, like I, I have security cameras in almost like every corner of my store. And uh, they feel like that they come here, they. Uh, their belongings and their stuff are safe. They, there were like a couple of incidences in the past that uh, the, the goods are stolen intentionally. The goods are stolen like intentionally, and so I look through all the those security cameras, and then we hunt down the stealers, and that of course makes gives a very good sense of security and safe environment for your game store. So these are my three main points that like immediately popped up in my head. Yep, that's it for me. All right. Thanks, Sunny. Um, Wendra? Uh, uh, so for me, actually, I uh, after I heard from the three answers, actually, I agree for all of them. But uh, for me, it's like I want to add something that we need to be the example for also for the the environment for the, the other players and like if like new player coming we need to like welcome them and uh like it's to be like to educate the new player something like that and we need to make uh every every everyone is feel welcome and maybe the the problem here is every i think every community have like uh, the toxic people and we need to like uh, giving them the feedback or this uh, maybe sometimes they're uh, too like already uh, too toxic and we need like if like they cannot uh, uh, hear our feedback anymore uh, I think we just try to like uh, because we need to make our environment safe for the other players I think we just cut off the toxic from them I think it's uh, that's all for me Thanks, Wendler. Um, okay. Next, uh, KS. Yes, hi. So if you realize the five of us, they are either also owners or our autonomous online or rent, rent a store or LGS before. So I, I think majority, uh, we, we, I think this will be a good chance for us to answer this question. And then uh, uh, this this also can be found, uh, some of the answers can also be found in a VPN uh, guide. So basically, uh, like control the environment, how we can how can we make the environment uh, the best for, for new players how to make it nice so be it smell uh, if, uh, if, it, if, if there's any funny smell maybe get rid of it maybe it might be the garbage uh, it might be because of the, the setting whether the people there and also making sure that the environment is clean for everybody uh, so how to sustain it probably uh, this this is also one of the things to, to manage as well uh, mm -hmm. then uh, to include inclusivity uh, it's also, I think, relatively important. Uh, how can we get people involved in the, uh, in, in, in in playing? Especially right, right now, this is a big thing in the states. Uh, like, how do you get LGBTQ? How do you get everybody inclusive in in playing? How do you engage the new players uh, to, to make them come back to to, to your LGS or to the community as well? And also, I think uh, one of the things that I would like to highlight is also uh, probably identify mentors or identify potential uh, people who are community leaders. Because I feel that these are the people who actually will, will bring people back to the community, uh, to, or to the place that you play in. 
because this this will be your so called the ring leaders or gang leaders where they actually can help you inculcate on and educate the newer players and then yeah and that will give them a good experience. That's it for me. Thanks. Uh, that's fine. If I may, I'd like to add on a little bit of an overview commenting. Um, it really depends on who is the person who's asking this question, right? Like at the end of the day, like um, we have a mix of answers from all five, and I think most of us are speaking more on the store owner slash organizer role, where uh, we were talking about setting up rooms, making people more comfortable uh, for their to come to your store. We're talking about staff training, like Ashtani mentioned, that uh, you know you want to train your staff to be uh, uh, to react appropriately to things. Uh, and then we have uh, from the other speakers, we talk about how uh, as a as a judge or as a community leader, you can be the person making good examples for everyone else. So um, the problem I have with this question is that depending on who you are, your role in uh, in your community there are different things that you should be doing. Like, for example, if you are just a, a player, a customer, right, you may be a community leader, but uh, at the end of the day, the, at, the, at the LGS, you're just a, you're just a, a player slash customer. Um, there is only so much you can do in regards to staff training or, or, or shop rules. right? Uh, you can suggest, you can advise, but uh, there's, there's very little thing else you can do about it. So uh, really, for this question is ask yourself, What's your role in the community and what are the resources? What is the, the, the power you have uh, to change, to, to do, and do your best uh, in following the philosophy? Yeah, thanks, QJ. Yeah, that was a, this is indeed quite a um, rather very broad question. <laughs> I guess it's kind of good to make it a start. I don't know. Uh, so, yeah, um, let's. Uh, by the way, chat, if you have any questions whatsoever, follow-ups to the discussion, feel free to just send it over uh, over chat. Uh, yeah, so let's go with the next question. So the next question is, uh, for new players who visit the LGS, how do you usually interest them to a game of Magic? Uh, do you usually invite all the new ones to play Magic? Um, by the way, for new players, I was like, new potential players, so they're just visitors in the shop. <laughs> now let's start with QJ. <laughs> Thanks, QJ. Yeah, sure. Uh, yes, yes, you should always get uh, them involved. Um, there's a bit of a skill here involved because you want to see how they react to you. Um, I'm speaking as a as a, as a store owner slash uh, um, invested member of the community where I want to see new members. Right? I see someone new. I want them to get involved uh, and spend some time at the at the, at the the store. Uh, and the best way to do that is to get to play a game. Right? Teach them how to play, if they don't know how to play, if they don't really know how to play. Um, you know, do, do they have a deck? Do you want to play something? Or uh, if they don't have a deck, do you have a dual deck? something uh, that might be fun and easy for people to pick up and start playing uh, because getting involved, spending some time, investing some time at your store is how you can get them to also in, in, you know, invest uh, themselves into your store and have uh, if, they, they, if they like what they see, if they enjoy it, you know, have, otherwise you might have someone who like come in, take a look uh, and then just walk off and then they're like, you know, I, and then they, they, they will decide whether or not they want to spend more time at your store based on that just that tiny little bit of um, interaction or observation of your store. Having them sit down and play uh, will give them more time to really appreciate if you've done a good job, uh, appreciate what is available in your store, uh, the ambience and whatnot, the resources, whatever, and that uh, hopefully they want to stay in play some more. Thanks, QJ. <laughs> Um, uh, next would be Shelley. Uh, thanks. Uh, I totally agree with what QJ said, and uh, I would like to add two more. Uh, how I would say tips, uh, which is uh, one, 
try to link with the the interest they already have. Most of the time, when there are new players coming into the card shop or your store, they don't just suddenly want to walk into your store. They they have some kind of intention or at least some kind of interest uh, already in the first place. So what we can build upon that is that what is the link that we can uh, link onto their interest. And for example, you can ask. Have you ever played other card games before? Do you play Yu-Gi-Oh! you play Pokemon? Those are the links and the play style that you can also recommend to the customer. For example, if they have been uh, playing, how should it be? let's say, Pokemon or One Piece for the time, then they are playing only constructed. And they are playing only, like uh, quite a very casual card game. So what you should uh, recommend to that player is more like, uh, maybe you should try Standard or maybe Jumpstart. Uh, if they haven't played the card game before, then maybe you can ask them, do you like to play board games? Have you ever known this uh, board game? This, uh, uh, what is uh, Sorry, the English just slipped out of my head. Basically, if uh, they play uh, board games before, then maybe try uh, introducing them EDH, a commander, because that's the format we have that is very close to the board game feeling. So these are the two quick tips that I always do to my new players and if in case they have like some kind of initial interest already so that would be like a very uh, good quick start i would say yeah thanks um render yeah uh, hello uh, okay uh for this on my experience as a store manager before so i uh, i agree with shanian that we is it my camera or? Yeah. So uh, yeah, uh, I agree with Shani that we ask the 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 newcomer that if they play uh, any other TCG before or something like that. But if like they answer, they like like play Pokemon or play the other game like Fungra or something like that. Then usually I ask more is like, uh, do, do you really enjoy the game or something like that? And is there any like I actually is, I try to find the weakness of the the other competitor. <laughs> so like. Like like the Fanger or Pokemon, they usually intend to like oh the <clears throat> the card is really like uh like the price is very like if I buy now it's very uh fluctuative and like I like today I buy very expensive and the next week it will be like no price at all so so I just tell him oh in Magic is is uh, it's actually it's back before yeah before before today so back before is. The our magic card is quite good for to invest, but recently it's uh, not not anymore for me because it's always repin, repin, and repin. So uh, the time is uh, the the player some of players is like oh is it magic or uh, is better investment than the 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 Japanese card game something? Else. Yeah, I said yeah, but I think now it doesn't work anymore because magic is uh, also similar with the. The, the Japanese TCG, and I think for now is we try to uh, like how the game interaction, like the the response, like like we can uh, play in the the opponent uh, turn something like that. Which the other game is, I think is not not all the the other competitor uh, have a good gameplay like the music thing. And for me, I'm not usually on uh, invite all the new play to play magic because sometimes I try to like uh, let them to play play a uh, board game, and I I want to uh, know what it's like. Is it they really uh, the addict to game or not? So if like they only like play for fun, I I think I'm not uh, invite them to play magic. So it's like only for like. The guy uh, that really addict to the game, I try to uh, invite them to play music. Okay, that's all for me. Thank you. Thanks, Wendra. Uh, KS? Hi. Yeah, so for me, uh, I will probably start off by asking the, the person or the player some simple questions. Like, uh, like before, if you really buy like insurance, usually you have this KYC kind of thing, so you, have, you know your client. So from there, we try to identify certain information to see uh, what actually attracts them to the store and uh, what actually attracts them to play Magic. So personally, in my opinion, like usually the people who come to play Magic are typically people who like uh, the, the, probably the law, the social aspect of the game, 
maybe even the competitive uh, events uh, or, or the price structure. Uh, where some some people are also attracted to why playing magic is because of uh, learning the language as well. Because the, the uh, I, I do have friends or I do have people who, who play magic because they, they can actually learn English and improve their English better. So this this would be some of the ways that uh, why would actually interest people in playing the game of magic. So for new players, uh, yes, for me, I would definitely introduce uh, MTG uh, because of the social experience or the social element of it. Rather, uh, other than being a uh, game, you actually get to socialize, uh, socialize with friends, players, and get to interact with, uh, with people around the world. Right? Like because well, because of this game, I get to know everybody here. Yeah, so that's why I would like to introduce it. Thank you so much as well. Yeah, that's my takeaway. Thanks, KS and uh, Charlie. Yeah, uh, I remember that Wizards gave uh, the LGS uh, some tools on how to welcome new players in the form of welcome decks. I'm not sure if you people remember that. Uh, it, it was a 30-card deck that's specific to a caller. Uh, that's something you can use to teach new potential players. Uh, you just uh, ask them, you have five minutes to play, and then you just... Uh, you, you, and it, the decks are made to be uh, really easy to understand. And uh, I think one thing I can uh, add to whatever uh, to the previous four answers is if you do get them to play with ma the game of magic, you let them win at all cost. Like uh, if the welcome days are not available, some some uh, I know some stores that they introduce EDH at the, first, at the very first game, and then they suddenly win with a demonic consultation, Tassos Oracle combo to make to show the new player how cool it is or something. So it's something we should avoid. Yeah, and then I think that uh, come 2020, they also give uh, Wizards also gave uh, a welcome pack that uh, con uh, it's a booster pack that contains uh, oh, the same contents. Like there's, I think there's a guy who plays well over there. Uh, so it's something that uh, will get the player, the new player, to be interested to play and come back for more. And that's it. I just want to want to add on the, the let them win part, right? Uh, yes, yes, uh, let them win uh, if you can. But also don't make it too obvious. Uh, yeah, yes, um, yes. Players who are who are drawn to magic tend to be, you know, very high uh, intelligence wise, you know, like logic wise. They, 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 if it's too obvious, then they can infer that, you know, you are purposely let them win. Um, mm -hmm. uh, again, this is a bit of a skill issue, like the as a as a as a TO, you know, I want to see an uh, employee who are able to be able to tell how the person is reacting to the way they are uh, to the game, and then be able to you know like uh, adjust themselves uh, or adjust the game how the game is flowing to better fit the the, the the person that they are teaching. But yeah, this is more of a TO thing. If you are uh, you know just a member of the community. Um, I would suggest that you bring attention to the staff or the TO or the store owner that there is such a person that sometimes we don't see them, right? So if, uh, if you're on the other side of the counter, if you see something like this, uh, you can help by being the friendly voice and uh, invite them to play a game. Or you let if you don't you don't have confidence in in, in being able to capture this uh, new players, let the TO know and hope the TO has someone who uh, has a staff on hand that is able to do this. Uh, what I like to do because I usually run a solo operation is um, if I'm busy, I like to find the most friendliest player customer that I have, and I think I'll seek, I'll send my player uh, on that new player, and then later give him a pack or something to. Uh, oh yeah, and we have the the uh, bring a fan promo that I like to give out for for, for my players who did help me with these things. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, I forgot to add that we give out the we give the welcome decks for free to the new players after you we may beat us. Um, for the uh first for the people who ask uh, uh now that we don't have welcome decks, uh, one you can make yourself. Uh, two the jumpstart decks are a good substitute. You know, just take out the rares or whatever you, you want, and um you know keep some jumpstart decks around. They are a great way to uh, get people to start. To new players to play, or you know, uh, returning players as well. I find them to be very, very nice tools. In fact, I like them a lot more than uh, the welcome decks. Personal opinion. Uh, and just one quick thing I'd like to add, since uh, we brought the welcome booster to uh, to the attention, this is not related to the question, but I'm 
and I'm not sure if it's happening to other countries or not. But as far as I know, all of the shipments of the welcome booster in Thailand, uh, since Monary United, they start uh, included the arena promo code, which they supposed to not have. I'm not sure it's happening in other countries too or not, or maybe they just screwed up on the Thailand shipment. So it's just another thing you can give to your local customers, but don't overuse them. Still, you need the welcome boosters for the the new players. As I, I suspect, I suspect that Thailand is getting directly from from you know not this uh, any but uh, you're, you're getting the US stock probably because ours uh Malaysia at least uh, we 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 are still don't have the arena. Yeah, I, I I talked with Art already, and he said that it's probably the logistics team screwed up. So just letting other countries know, maybe you're the lucky guy too. <laughs> All right, uh, yeah, that was a very healthy discussion. Um, I, I just noticed uh, as I, while we were doing the first two questions is that um, if you're on the very last part of the the panel to answer the question it might be very hard for you already because uh, it might have been answered already by the previous ones so um if ever that would be the case then just feel free to say that uh, uh, there's not anything more you can add or something like that uh, oh i don't, you don't have to worry about that for me because uh if that happens to me i'm actually happiest because it's you know less things to talk about <laughs> Right. So, uh, feel free, feel free to put me on the last if you if you're worried. <laughs> no, it, it's okay. It, it's just that I wanted it to be fair, <laughs> like just have it in sequence. <laughs> so, all right. Uh, all right, that was a quick segue. Let's go to the next one. Uh, all right. So, for those new players, you have made interested to a point that they underwent a tutorial. Perhaps uh, take home a welcome deck, which. Uh, apparently isn't available, that much available anymore. What are the various steps you would do in order for you to increase the chances that the player will return for more and to eventually become a regular customer and player? So let's uh, start off now with uh, Shani. Okay, sure. Uh, for me, uh, it's more of like bullet points here. That basically invite them to your or group chat or maybe like the frequent uh, group chat members so that they feel like they become a part of the community uh, of your store already. Then ask them to try and join your event. And meanwhile, don't hold only the competitive event, the top heavy price event, because those are not new players friendly. So maybe you have something like a casual or free to play event uh, every once in a while so that they feel like they can come by, enjoy, and don't feel pressured to be good from the start. Uh, explain to them the, your loyalty program. If you buy this, you get the points or you can accrue the points to get the special prize. If you come to this amount of events, then you can get the another special prize or those kind of stuff, et cetera. And then uh, basically provide them various reasons to rejoin your event or uh, make uh, purchase again and again so that once people start investing into something, it's a lot more difficult for them to quit. It's just like, for example, you play your gacha phone game and you already paid 100 US dollars. You're not going to quit very easily. So that, that's just the same thing for Magic the Gathering. That's it. Yeah. That's, <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Basically, um, Magic the Gathering is the father, godfather of Gacha Pong. <laughs> You're into DPS. Yeah. Uh, all right, so next to me, KS. Thanks, by the way, Shane. Hi. So for, for me, uh, I'll actually ask uh, where the, the, the player, okay, uh, I'm talking on the point that the, the person actually uh, learned how to play an MTG through a event, uh, or maybe like a convention center. So usually I'll, I'll start to point them to uh, where they stay, uh, where will they, then I'll just check out where will the nearest LGS or nearest card game location that the person is likely to have. Uh, then I'll also tell them the, the investment value of the game. So like over 20 years, the, the cards actually appreciate the value quite very, quite fast. And from there, we can actually uh, hope that they can actually catch that as well. Uh, previously, I also uh, will tell them about the law of the game. Uh, why this game makes it interesting. Uh, I told them there will be a MTG movie. 
Disney coming out by the Russell Brothers. Uh, I also share like there will be a potential anime coming in Netflix. So these are the things that will actually entice people to to come back and play the games. Uh, rather than just rather just than just a physical card game, they actually have the, the other sources to look out for. Uh, and this will be the best time to come in because uh, by the time when uh, other people know about the game, about the anime, and everything, the, the more the, 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 there will be more players in the base, and then there will be more demand, and uh, yeah, the card value will go up. Yeah, this is this is one way of me uh, getting players to you know uh, and, and to stick to MTG. Thanks, Chaos, and uh, I apologize, I skipped Windra. Uh, yeah, so, uh, Windra, please. <laughs> no worries. So, I actually, I also uh, follow the Shanin way that I uh, invite them to the to the group chat. So, uh, I will answer in from the store manager or store owner perspective. So, after that, I will ask, after I invite them, and if I the that new player to to the group, I usually ask help for the the players that are already in the group. But actually, they also they is like no need to uh uh me for ask them because they are like already oh we got a new friend so we got a new for a new player then they like try to help the new player like uh what's the uh, what is the good format for for, for that the players and uh if like example oh. Uh, the player uh, wanted to play a competitive, then they will suggest to play a standard, and they will like. So, uh, for me, for my opinion, it's like help, uh, help the new player from the 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 other players, because if uh, we uh tell them, maybe they think that oh, this guy w just want to sell sell the things, sell the products for 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 me, something like that. So if if uh, they hear from the the also the from the player is oh I think this uh, the the actual actual suggestion uh, actual advice for for them to play play uh, magic and maybe like if like they want to play casual or something like that they can ask the the player so for me it's like if uh, I think we need to like make the the like like the first question we need to make safe environment first then uh, we make them like a family then it's like uh, like automatically like if new player comes we just invite them the group then it's like uh like the system already so the the the, the other place in the group will help you to to build the community i think that's why that's why i love magic and uh i love to like because for me it's not only sell the product so i i back then i try to make a good community in my at least in at least in my local game so i think that's all for me thank you <clears throat> yeah. So uh, one thing I do uh, before I ask them to if they like to join the group chat is to at least like the store Facebook page, and uh, and this is something I had mild success on uh, is to create a new player event, like uh, it's a small tournament maybe at least for as little as four players that's uh, only meant for new players. The prizes would be just very simple to discourage the, the regular players to join. Uh, I think that's it. I mean, of course, of course, to invite their friends over. I'm sure if uh, I'm sure they have friends, right? So, yeah, that's it. All right. Uh, thanks, Sean and CJ. I just want to add on. Um, to a lot of things that have been said. Uh, I think one of the most important things is we have to remember that Magic is a game of games. Um, and you should, for a new player who is interested enough to, to bring home a deck, uh, you should remind them of the, all the various bridges, that show them all the various bridges that they can cross. Like all the other, all the options that is, that's possible with Magic. You can be competitive, you can be casual, you can be EDH, you can be limited. You know, there's so many things. It really is a game of games. Uh, give them those options and then if you can sort of zone in on what they are most interested in and uh, give them the resources for them to go through the road. Um, uh, of course, you have to be careful not to overwhelm them with too many options at the same time. So that, that's what I would say from the TO perspective. 
from the player perspective, um, if you're not if you're not on the other side of the counter, I would recommend that maybe you check with uh, the the LGS to see if whatever resources they have, they might have uh, free decks, free boosters, free uh, promos to get you started that can help you help others get into the game. Uh, so that's that's something that I, I keep on to come back to because really depends on what which side of the counter you're on. I agree. Uh, thanks, TJ. Um, yeah, we actually still have quite a bunch of questions uh, down the line, and not with a lot of time. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, so I guess we could move on to the next and see how far we can go, but that may not be all these questions. <laughs> all right, uh, let's go. This time we'll start with uh, Wendra. So what is the key to success in handling new and small community? Can you share good tips for both LGS and judges for handling teams and children in the local NTD community? So yeah, for me, I back then when I was uh, handling the store, I there's a, some things that also play the game. So uh, actually we need like to know their habit because their habit is like, uh, intend to like tend to like very easy to get bored or something to get bored with like, like when they build a deck or something like that. We like try uh, for me, I try to educate them that uh, it's like uh, you need to focus on the deck and like one or two decks so they they need to like uh, practice. So instead of when you're losing, you change the deck. It will uh, lose, like, you will spend a lot of money on that. So I think for me, it's uh, more care to, to, to the teens and the children, something like that. So uh, for me, for, like, the new and small community, I mean, it's pre for me, it's people to, like, be honest to the players. So it's sometimes, uh, maybe, I, I don't know if, like, there is, like, uh, so it's, like, a good product. Like not a good product. It's like just so so product. It's like on not really good product. So sometimes we try, try to sell. Oh, this is a very good product or something like that. So for me, it's like better to be honest than let them to choose the the best of the product. And sometimes they will feel. I, I for me, uh, from my experience, they they felt that uh they more appreciate that uh our honest when we sell the things and also make. Uh, they trust uh, us as the community leaders, and then uh, yeah, uh, take care, take care of the players. So we need like uh, we need the, the care of our uh, our players. So yeah, I think that's that's all for me. Thank you. Thanks, Wendra. Uh, yes. Thanks. Hi. Well, for me, it's actually not more towards the teens and children. The reason why the teens and children will probably be interested in the game is uh, they already know they did their research, they did their homework. So it's more like for me to sell for you or to their parents, how to convince the parents to actually know about the game. So usually for me, uh, what I usually do uh, for the key to success is uh, tell them that it's all about the math. So basically, the kids will actually get to learn how math, how to do your uh, calculations, how to do good, good mathematics calculations. Uh, I mentioned earlier, it's all about the English, the reading and the vocabulary from, from the game. And also about the creativity, how, how we can build potential combos, how we can make potential decks uh, that is fun. And also sometimes it's about the art of the game. Uh, the art, the artwork might uh, generally interest some players, some, uh, some people, uh, some of, uh, for example, lands. Usually people will also just collect the, the really nice looking uh, lands as well. And then, uh, MTG is definitely about critical thinking for most of them. Yeah, basically, I'm teaching this to, to a lot of the, 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 the schools as well. So how they can actually present different, uh, different, uh, same set of problems using a different set of solutions. And how do you actually get, uh, get them to, 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 to get, uh, to, to, uh, to, to solve certain, uh, scenarios. And of, of course, it's about the fun and also the, the socializing part of it. Yeah. That's, that's my point. Thanks, Chaos. Uh, Chart? Yeah. So, uh, more on the 
teens and children part. Uh, well, yeah. So when dress correct, you need to get the the parents involved here. So of course you'll be the one paying for whatever they want to buy. Uh, we actually had a, a customer before, not really teens, but more like twenties, and his father is about sixty. Uh, we actually got the, the the son actually quit, and the dad has been playing ever since. So he's about sixty plus right now. So uh, yeah, this, I think that's the key to to uh, to handling teens and children to get the father or mother involved. Uh, yeah, I think that's it. Most of the time, they're they're, they're gamers, uh, just in other games. So that's it. Thanks, Jared. And Jay. So uh, I think something that hasn't been really brought up is um, when you're dealing with children, uh, it is very important to have. Uh, patience and uh, you know be not only you have to have patience you also have to have the, the diplomacy skill to, to deal with children in the way where um, for me I find it the most the most success is when I make them feel that they are understood like, uh, especially children especially if they're in an environment that's, that there's a lot more people who are older than them they might not have uh, they might not feel like they deserve to be heard or, you know, they want to be heard, but they don't feel that they're heard. So when you're dealing with uh, with children, one important thing is you can try to make them feel that they're, they, they, they are being given attention and that you understand uh, their wants and their needs. So if they're explaining something to you, uh, it's very helpful to like repeat the things. Uh, 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 do I understand you correctly that you want to do this and that? And so then give them the, the, the whatever they want or whatever they need to the best of your abilities. Um, this works both in teaching the game, uh, playing a game, or solving problems during tournament. So, dealing with children means you have give, uh, the two things I want to I want to highlight: uh, paying attention and uh, having patience. Uh, Joel wants to ask a question. Yeah, Joel wants to ask a question. Go ahead, Joel. Um, but while waiting for your question, uh, let's uh, go with Shanine first. Yeah, actually, almost every uh, all of my points have been uh, said by other panelists already, so, so I totally agree with them. And I just want to give one quick addition to what QJ just said, uh, which is very, very important, is that when you're dealing with the children, especially the teenagers, uh, they tend to be, uh, I'm not generalizing, uh, sorry, I, I, I'm, uh, how should I say? Basically, they, they, they tend to be a little irrational. They tend to be just like when, we're, when we were teenagers, <laughs> you know, uh, we <clears throat> prioritize things differently than what we do now. For example, I also I, I have like a few customers who they prioritize having a super cool bling up deck instead of having like a value, the things that, that is a little better value proposition to them. My clearest example is that I have a one teenager customer who is uh, so obsessed with collecting all of their the dual lands, which is very expensive to them. When he is only like 17 now, but and but so he has been grabbing all of the dual lands as much as he can in the past year. And he keeps like telling other people that, oh, he doesn't have money. Oh, I, can't, I cannot grab with you guys because I have no money. But it's like, when we hear, hear it, it sounds like, huh? <laughs> you know, so just like Jay said, be a little patient and uh, just give them time. They still not that fully grown up yet. So yes, that's how you handle the children, basically. Thanks, Janine. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm looking at the time. I think we can probably do one or two more questions. And let's start off with, um, I'm trying to be a little bit faster here. Uh, Joel's question here. Uh, so his question, it's uh, how do you think is the overlook of the community towards persons with disability? How accessible are stores or tenants for them? And let's start with uh, KS. Thanks. Hey, I uh, sadly in Singapore, a majority of the places uh, are actually located with a stem out. Uh, like for example, mine is in a home shelter. Uh, there's no, uh, there's no. Uh, access for, for uh, non-stairs and also there are quite a fair bit of stocks in Singapore uh, 
uh, with no uh, lift access as well. Uh, reason being of the, the land space in Singapore that's pretty much expensive, pretty expensive here. Uh, but however, uh, we we do have we do have a, a person in in particular who actually usually parks his uh uh, uh like wheelchair on 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 the surface level, and then uh, we will actually actually help him down the stairwell, and then he can just find a place to sit down, and we will just actually uh, get the players to to go to him rather than him going to everybody else. Yeah, so that that is my point. As long as there is a way that we can help out in the community, as long as we can we can address certain issues within our community, definitely will be will be always helping out the, to these people. Yeah. Thanks, KS uh, Chari. Um, by the way, the question is uh, in the chat uh, sent by Joel. So. Richard, uh, you're not. You have. You're still muted. Sorry. Yeah. So, uh, sadly, not. Not. Not too. We're not looking good in that. Uh, most of the some of the stores are located in second floors because it's cheaper rent. But uh, I guess for most of those uh, concerns are addressed uh, on uh, in stores that are located in malls. So, but. I think we treat Joel really well when he visits the store. <laughs> yeah, uh, so uh, we arrange, we uh, adjust like when there's an uh, pairings during pairings, we don't ask them to move anymore. So the table numbers will be disregarded. Uh, whoever is uh, his opponent will have to adjust. Yeah, that's it. Uh, in Malaysia. Uh, in Malaysia, it's unfortunately a pretty much similar situation where uh, a lot of stores are, you know, shop, second floor shop lots, so they're not very accessible for uh, for uh, for a lot of uh, people with mobility issues. Um, except for the ones, uh, just like what you just said, except for the one, there's a brand new store uh, in in a mall who is very quickly becoming a which became a premium store in Malaysia very quickly. They are in a mall. They are very accessible. Um, but you know the, the bad things aside, what I found uh, with Magic players and Magic TOs is that they are very accommodating. Uh, to but they will do whatever they can, and uh, you know the moment we have uh, anything that needs extra accommodation, a lot of people, are, uh, a lot of organizers and players themselves are very willing to go out of their way to accommodate uh, these things. Um, but yeah, th there's definitely a lot more things to be, that can be done. Uh, especially when I go to events in the states and I see that you know there's so much more things that they they do to make sure that they are always accessible to all sorts of people with all sorts of different uh, disabilities. So uh, we're doing the the people are great, uh, but we can definitely can do that. Thanks, QJ. Uh, Shanine. Actually, I don't really have anything to add here, and I just totally agree. Uh, we try to cater as much as we can, but uh, if it's something like physically and we can't really change, then it's pretty hard to change because, you know, let's be fair, uh, trading card game business isn't really that profitable. <laughs> so <laughs> we can't really add something that is too expensive, but we try our best to do so. Thanks, Janine and Wendra. Oh, okay. Uh, for me in in Jakarta, so I I think yeah I have players that uh they have problem with the the fingers, so it's the the finger is not not complete. So uh, what I what I did uh towards the player that I always like tried like uh, uh treat them as the normal person. So I don't want feel they uh the the guy that guy feel like oh. Why you treat me is very special or something like that. So I just treat them uh, as a normal. Then I, but I like uh, prepare that if they, if he uh, needs something that I, I will just uh, help the But as long as, as long as the the guy is still can do by themselves, I will not to help. So it's like for me, it's better uh, make the player feel they. Uh, they not very special, so they just like oh, uh, I'm, I'm same like like the others. So, but for the other disability, I am never experienced. So I maybe I agree with the other with the other uh, panelists. Uh, okay, thank you for 
uh, that's all for me. Thank you. Thanks, Sonia. Um, so I think that would be the last question. <laughs> it would have been nice to be able to have more. Um, but yeah, time is uh, against us right now. So um, before we wrap up this uh, this uh, panel discussion, um, do any of you have any like last words, maybe reflections on the discussions, etc.? Um, yeah, before we yeah before we wrap up, wrap it up. Thanks. Um, yeah, anyone, anyone can answer. <laughs> I'll call Richard, so. <laughs> right, Richard. Sorry, muted again. Are we gonna still gonna go through the other questions later, or are we cutting? Are, are we cutting no, it short? We're, we're cutting it short. Oh, yeah. oh. That's the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I, I guess uh, actually for the next question, that would be my I, what I think I could uh, contribute the most is for for we we are uh, we assign different formats for different days. Uh, so if you have a large community, and we as community champions is. To manage them properly is we assign like Monday for standard, Tuesday for Pioneer, Wednesday for modern, or something like that. Uh, so that way you can manage them properly and have community leaders for each format to help you uh, manage everyone. Yeah, that's it for me. Thanks, Jared. Uh, for your reference, by the way, uh, this is the question Richard's referring to. And any other? Um, panelists that has uh, something uh, to say before we end this uh, discussion? I think uh, maybe what we can do is uh, for the rest of the questions, maybe everyone can share their written responses. If uh, for those people who want to ask or who will ask those questions, we'll have their answers suggestion. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. I could I could coordinate with you and how we could go about that the next uh, like after this um, conference? So um, in regards of wrapping things up, um, I think as a judge, uh, regardless of your position or whether you're a TO or anything, right, yeah, as a judge, as everyone here is a certified judge. Right? I think ultimately our goal is to be uh, to make an event or, you know, wherever you are uh, related to the veggie community, uh, you want to help Make a place a better place. Uh, make make a place that people will feel happy to be in, and uh, it will be make a place that uh, people will want to come back to be in. So, uh, work with the stakeholders. If if you're not if you're not on the like I like I I, I like to keep referring to the other side of the counter. If you're not on the other side of the counter, work with them. See what resources they can help to give you to do uh, to help them. Uh, build a nicer, bigger community for everyone because uh, a big community is not only good for the business side, it's also good for, for you as well because the larger community means a more healthier and more vibrant community as well. So, yeah, I think it doesn't, it doesn't really, uh, it shouldn't be a surprise that we want to make it a safe, welcoming environment for everyone uh, in order to have a, a growing, vibrant community. So, Please uh, do your best uh, to help each other have uh, a, a nicer time in this sort of places. Thanks, QJ. Um, anyone else want to uh, share anything before we wrap this up? You can proceed with uh, Z's uh, question on uh, quiz. <laughs> All right, I think uh, I think we're good for now, and I'll just uh, gather all the ans unanswered questions and send it out to the group, and maybe post it in the uh, Southeast Asia Judge Group for the answers, something like that. That I'm just thinking out loud right now. But, yeah, we'll talk about it with Felix later. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Um, thanks, everyone. Uh, 
Yeah, it was a really, really interesting discussion, and sadly, yeah, we need more time. <laughs> Uh, Dino, one thing, uh, just to clarify the things that's been going on with the chat. Um, the 